let's talk about Paxlovid or Nermatrelvir. This is Pfizer's blockbuster pill for COVID-19 that back in uh, late 2021, we got data on showing that in high risk, non-hospitalized, unvaccinated patients, that this drug Paxlovid was very effective in reducing hospitalizations or death. But the story has really changed, and I kind of want to walk through uh, a little bit of a chronology of, of the evidence as we know it, because the real question is, who needs this drug? If you have a risk factor for developing severe COVID-19 and you're vaccinated, are you still considered high risk? Well, the CDC and the FDA certainly think so, because in their guidance on, on Paxlovid, they will say that people with severe COVID-19 risk should take Paxlovid. They don't modify that by saying, well, if they're vaccinated, that really changes the whole story. Well, we did get some, some data from Israel and also a study uh, from here in, in the United States as well, observational data, looking at large data sets, looking at Paxlovid use and how it went among the vaccinated and the unvaccinated. They showed very convincingly with a very, very large data set that people who are 65 years or older, Paxlovid did help them even if they were vaccinated. Now, if you look at the numbers that you would need to treat to prevent one hospitalization in that immune cohort, it's far, far less favorable for the drug. But at the end of the day, the downsides seem pretty minimal. So I think there's pretty good consensus that people who are 65 and older, and maybe even younger than that, 50, 60 plus, might be benefiting even if vaccinated. Interestingly, this study also gave us a readout on outcomes among patients who are 40 to 64 years old to see if Paxlovid was helping those folks with and without immunity. And it's very, very clear that for the younger populations, there simply was not a detectable benefit there. So regardless of whether you're vaccinated or not under 64 years of age, this observational data set really seemed to suggest that Paxlovid was not necessary. What I think is actually quite interesting in that data set, and I want to highlight this. So if you were a person, regardless of age, who who actually had existing immunity, so you'd been infected before or you had been vaccinated before, if you were going to be hospitalized, despite all that, it was because you had a history of hospitalization for any reason uh, in recent times. I think that's very, very powerful information to say if a patient is sick enough that they're getting hospitalized for any old reason in the past few months, whether it's diabetes or malignancy or heart disease, that that risk pool seems to be where Paxlovid is helping the most in the vaccinated cohort. So I think overall, that paper really showed us that there probably is an age cutoff. But what about symptoms? There seems to be a lot of um, leaping towards, oh, well, it must help symptoms. It must help symptoms because it lowers viral loads. Now, of course, that's not necessarily true. Lowering a viral load does not necessarily uh, equate with symptom control. In fact, a lot of symptoms are, are related to our own immune system. And so viral load might not even be related to that. But I think that the most telling piece of information we have on symptom control with Paxlovid is Pfizer's data itself. The Epic HR study, the blockbuster study that, that showed Pax, Paxlovid's great effect in preventing hospitalizations and deaths was tracking symptom relief but it wasn't reported in the trial. And I just wonder why Pfizer would not have told us about this. Additionally, Pfizer had another study going called EPIC-SR, Standard Risk, which was primarily aimed at checking self-reported sustained alleviation of all symptoms based on whether or not patients had Paxlovid or not. And that trial was halted. It was ended. They stopped recruiting because they, they knew they'd missed the endpoint. They had not met the endpoint they wanted. They did not detect any self-reported sustained alleviation of COVID symptoms in their patients with standard risks who took Paxlovid. Now the question is, what's the harm? Like, why not just take Paxlovid if it helps people who are unvaccinated, helps high-risk people? Well, the downside, I think, would be two things to really think about. First of all, stewardship, right? Anytime we are prescribing an antimicrobial, there could be resistance. We don't want to cause resistance because of over-prescribing. So far, there hasn't been an issue, at least that, not that we've been detecting, but I think it's an important thing to follow. The second thing is that there's this phenomenon called rebound, COVID rebound or Paxlovid rebound. Early in the disease, you're contagious, you're symptomatic, 
And then you get better, your symptoms get better, you're actually not contagious anymore. And then the viral loads come back and you're symptomatic and contagious again. And that's a problem. We, we don't know how much of this is caused by Paxlovid, how much of this is happening just without Paxlovid. And there's a real debate about this. So let's talk about that real quickly. Back in the original Epic HR study that Pfizer presented in the New England Journal, the, the rate of rebound was quite low, 1%, 2%. And it really wasn't different whether you got placebo or Paxlovid. So they, they, they said, look, this is not really a thing that's happening uh, because of Paxlovid. But since that trial, a lot of things have changed. The thing we notice is that rebound is far higher uh, than 2% in all patients with COVID-19. So that's concerning that something's changed. So if Paxlovid is responsible for that, which I think a lot of people think it might be, then what you're doing is you're not improving symptoms early on and then the patients can go back to normal. You're, you're having a short-term improvement, maybe, that's then balanced out by this, this rebound, this, this, this period where you get worse again. And even scarier, when you think you're in the clear and are no longer isolating, are contagious again. And there are data sets, the small studies that have confirmed that that's absolutely happening. So the pa patients who had rebound clearly spread it during the rebound phase, and that was confirmed with genetics. So this, this rebound phenomenon is not benign from a population health perspective. At the moment, I just I, I don't think that there's an indication for Paxlovid for people without severe risks, um, and especially in an, an immune cohort, um, we don't really see a, a huge benefit, especially in younger patients, but we don't know. So we're going to watch the space and if you have questions on this drug, if you have experiences with it, please share it. And thank you for joining us here on MedPage today.